Around two years ago, I wrote a letter to GoodNotes, one of the most well-known iPad note-taking apps in the world. I remember being incredibly conflicted at the time. There was this app that I really loved that had some incredible features, but there was just one thing about it that was nagging me that I couldn't get out of my head. Put simply, the fountain pen in the latest version of the GoodNotes app at the time, which is GoodNotes 5, was significantly different from the fountain pen in the previous version of the app, GoodNotes 4. And although that might sound like a minuscule feature on the surface, it actually led to me using GoodNotes 5 less and less and the older version of the app more and more. And so I remember sitting down one Saturday afternoon, typing out that note, and then later I recorded myself delivering the message of that letter to GoodNotes and then I published a video. Now a lot's happened in the last two years with the GoodNotes app, but to cut to the chase for this video, GoodNotes did it. GoodNotes actually did it. They fixed the fountain pen in the GoodNotes 6 app, and I am just so excited to talk to you about that in today's video. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're here for the first time, my name is Samuel. I'm an educator, filmmaker, and marketer. And for a long time, I talked a lot about how I learn and my process for note-taking on the iPad. One of the questions that comes up when you delve into the world of digital note-taking is what is the best note-taking app on the iPad? Now, when you're on your search for an answer to that question, there are a lot of things you can use as a criteria for determining what is the perfect app for you. Here's a couple of things. The plethora of pens, colors, and tools the app has. Or maybe it is a well-designed file management system that is easy to navigate. Maybe it's how cheap the app is for you as a student. Perhaps it's its general aesthetic and its look and feel. Maybe you want to have a record feature. Maybe you want to search for handwritten text. Maybe you want your note-taking app to have a bit of AI integration. As I described in my video two years ago, you can get all that right as a note-taking app. But if your users don't genuinely enjoy picking up the Apple Pencil and writing on the screen, if they don't enjoy the writing mechanics, the pressure sensitivity, the speed, the way it feels and responds when you write on the digital glass canvas with the Apple Pencil, I really don't think anything else matters. Because to be honest, even in my own experience, I have found that if I don't enjoy the writing experience, I will always revert to what's familiar and comfortable. And so as I confessed in my letter to GoodNotes, although they had released GoodNotes 5 at the time, which was a significant upgrade from GoodNotes 4 with a better file management system, overall aesthetic, you could now search handwritten text, there were all these new features. However, I kept reverting back to GoodNotes 4 simply because I loved the characteristics of its fountain pen. Like there's honestly something about it that's just unique and different to every other pen in every other app on the iPad. It's a little cartoony, it feels like a permanent marker, but honestly, subjectively speaking, it made my handwriting look better than my handwriting in real life. And that's honestly the thing that made me use it over pen and paper because I genuinely preferred it. I ended up taking my biology notes on it, my chemistry notes in it. I went all the way to making a 100 page physiology textbook handwritten on my iPad, which I've talked about previously on my channel. And when GoodNotes 5 came out, I was super excited because I made the assumption that the exact same fountain pen would carry over from GoodNotes 4 to GoodNotes 5. However, that was not the case. As I showed in that video, there was something a little bit off when it came to pressure sensitivity. And it was very subtle and kind of hard to explain in words, but in my video, I exaggerated it and zoomed in heaps and showed how when you write really big with the fountain pen in GoodNotes 5, it drastically varies in thickness. Now, some may argue that is a truer representation of what a fountain pen is meant to look like. However, it bothered me, which led to me making the video. And what was interesting was when I read the comments of the video, I was sort of surprised to read through them and see that um, there were heaps of people out there who felt the same way. People saying things like, I thought I was the only one and putting forward theories as to why that was the case. And then I think it was in like in August 2023 when GoodNote 6 came out. And I remember some people being incredibly excited. Some people was a bit controversial because GoodNotes made the shift from a one-time purchase app to a subscription model with the option for a slightly more expensive one-time purchase. And so while yes, I do see where those people are coming from, I was interested to see what would happen 
with the subscription model. Often one of the implications is you see more substantial and significant features being released in the app more frequently, which I think is really cool. So I was always looking out for updates to the writing mechanics in the GoodNotes app. And to be honest, like the first couple of months, there was literally an update to everything, but no pen update. Now, earlier this year, if you didn't know, I had the incredible opportunity to go to London and do an interview with the CEO of GoodNotes, Stephen Chan an incredibly humble man and it was really lovely to speak to him. And even before the interview, the GoodNotes team was like, in the interview, you have to thoroughly explain your GoodNotes 4 pen issue with Stephen. And so about halfway through the interview, I remember pulling out my iPad and explaining the situation and giving him my feedback. And I really appreciated that, you know, Stephen listened, he asked a few questions and he was very quick to say, that this was something that could easily be fixed in an update. Essentially what happened with GoodNotes 5 is they rebuilt the writing mechanics from the ground up. And when they did that, the velocity of the stroke was factored in to the fountain pen and the thickness that would come out. And ultimately it was done with the intention that you would get a more realistic, true to life version of what a fountain pen was. So, and so at that stage, there wasn't really a switch that could revert it back to what it was. And so just recently, GoodNotes released an update. Um, it might have actually been a couple months ago, but I discovered it just recently, so forgive me, I'm a little late to it. And I got super excited because I realized there's this new feature that allows you to tweak the GoodNotes 6 fountain pen in a way that makes it so very close to the GoodNotes 4 fountain pen. So if I draw a squiggly line really quick, you can see the current effect that it has. Some parts are skinny, some parts are thicker. If I write the word hello really big, you can see this effect exaggerated again. Now, if I go up to the fountain pen in the toolbar, these are my settings, by the way. I'm set to fountain pen. My chip sharpness is 25%. My pressure sensitivity is 25%. And my tip flatness is at zero, which equates to being round. So it's not a flathead pen. Now, if you go down and tap on pen settings, you'll now see a toggle called adjust thickness by speed. If you just turn that off, essentially what we get is the GoodNotes 4 OG pen. So if I draw a squiggly line, they're consistent. When I write the word hello on the screen, there's still that responsiveness to pressure, um, but because speed is factored out, it retains around 90 to 95% of the original GoodNotes 4 pen characteristics. Once again, this is really hard to explain purely through a visual. It's only when you feel the difference when writing that you get a proper sense of how significant this is. Now, if you're asking me what that final 5 to 10% of improvement could be, it's really small stuff, like the way my E's tail off, um, almost as though there's some autocorrect in there that's straightening those lines that didn't appear in GoodNotes 4. But they're really small, they're really negligible, I'll communicate it to the people at GoodNotes, but it, it doesn't really bother me at the moment. In the grand scheme of things, this is a really tiny thing. It's just a toggle for a pen in an app. But like, I'm super excited. And it's not the kind of excitement that comes with new pieces of technology. It's the kind of excitement you have when something that's old and was really good comes back. And there's a sense of familiarity that I have with it. As I said at the start of the video, ultimately it is the quality of the writing experience that you get when using the app that permeates the entire app experience. And I'm just so happy that more people get the chance to experience what in my opinion is the best writing experience you can get on an iPad today. Um, I remember saying to GoodNotes in my letter to them in 2022 that if GoodNotes could just fix up this one thing, I reckon it would go a long way in settling the debate around what the best note-taking app in the world is. And so thank you to the people at GoodNotes. Thank you to the CEO of GoodNotes for taking the feedback that you get seriously, no matter how small or trivial it might be. Um, I think we see that not only in this update, but the constant updates that are coming out. And I can confidently say two things. Firstly, I feel like I can actually stop using the GoodNotes 4 app that is still on my iPad to this day and not miss it. And secondly, I genuinely feel like I can recommend this app to family, friends, and my audience with zero caveats because it ticks every important box for me and I have no significant complaints. 
So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing all the cool things that are coming to GoodNote 6. There's been a lot of stuff that's come out in the last year, to be honest. Um, and I've held back on commenting on that. But if you guys are interested in more GoodNote 6 content, maybe an overview of the app and how I use it to take notes more practically, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, I'm keen to hear your thoughts as to whether the speed toggle actually makes a noticeable difference in the fountain pen for you and whether that's something you actually prefer. Could just be me, who knows. But apart from that, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Time.